time. Okay, there we go. Okay, welcome back everybody to Coffee and Art in the morning, in the afternoon, whenever. <laughs> so, in the last segment, I won't go through it again right now because we have a, we already talked about we're going to have a, I did a color book collection notebook where you use a three ring binder to keep and tab your color book pages that fit in a th eight and a half by 11. There are some pages though that we know that are like nine by nine, 10 by 10, even bigger that won't fit in that. So if you want to keep a larger notebook with your larger color book pages, similar to this one you can get one of the 12 by 12 scrapbook notebooks the sleeves are the exact the the holes punched in a 12 by 12 sleeve and in the eight and a half by 11 sleeves are the exact same hole punch so you can combine your 12 by 12 pages and your eight and a half by 11s in one larger notebook i may end up doing that so we just did that in the last segment so I'm also, now what I'm going to do is, <laughs> what I'm going to do now is go through some more color books and talk about how, you know, we can either cut them up, use them. And I just had some people requesting to see some. This is, I, I, I'm no, not joking, guys. I haven't counted how many color books I have. But I did pull a stack here of ones where I've done, other than the ones I just showed in that other segment, some other ones that I pulled where I might have only colored a page or two in. And there, therein lies the rub. <laughs> we have all these color books, and we love every one, and we'll color a page, two, three, or, you know, so far, like in the Jasmine book, color book, I've colored, um, and the Doodlers Anonymous, I've colored quite a few. But like in the Jasmine um, book, I think I've colored like five. Here's, so I took them out. I've labeled them on the back. I'm not going to get into it now because I just did a segment on it. But I just want to show you. So I have these beautiful five pages. I say beautiful because I'm very happy with them. <laughs> and I've done these five pages and they're just sitting in a book. They may not get back to, you know, for weeks or maybe a couple months because I'm on to another color book. And then I don't look at them for a long time. But if you keep them somehow in a book, you're more apt to enjoy them. So I'm going to just show you a few other color books here that I have um, done something in. I've only done one page, and I, in this case, I did make a copy of it so it would be smaller. Okay, these pages in this book here are, um, it's the classic comic coloring book. Let me get my ruler handy because I know I'm going to need it. Let me just get an easy one more in here. This is eight and a half by 11 and three quarters. So you could always trim it down a little bit enough to fit in your book. So if you did in fact color these, you could trim these down to fit in an eight and a half by 11 notebook. Or if you've done the 12 by 12 notebook we were just talking about, you don't have to trim them down at all. In this case, I made a copy of one and it, I cut it down because I wanted it the size of an actual comic book right so that's why I did that for myself you know just made a copy and this one's not quite done yet but I will put this in let me get a sleeve here show you how we did it let me get a sleeve with a black piece of paper in our cardstock okay so and all I do and I've, I've already shown this in the other one but I'm gonna just go ahead and do it here just put a little little tiny piece of double-sided tape in each corner and last time you know I did say something about this not being acid free but I believe now scotch tape is acid free but I'm not worried about it okay so I'm just going to center that okay and on the back where's my white pencil I will write from the classic comic coloring book I don't know if it has an editor or at least a publisher. Let's see who put this out. I think it's, um, I think, uh, what you call it, put this out. It's put out by Metro, but uh, Michael O'Mara. Yeah, Michael O'Mara, which they're out of England. I've been in contact with them. 
or a pub. I'll just put publisher. Okay, so then I can go back in the sleeve. Yeah, I dropped my sleeve. Where'd it go? Where did it go? How could it? I mean, I know it's clear, but oh, there it is. <laughs> it's not invisible. And then I'll put that in there. And I'll make it, I'll put a uh, tab here, you know, to have a tab for the next section of a color book page. There we go. Again, if you're going to do any tearing out of larger pages, you'll need the 12 by 12 notebook or binder because you're, those pages aren't going to fit in an eight and a half by 11 sleeve. So I just want to show you that's the only page I've colored out of this one. It's an awesome, fun book. I mean, you know, if you like comic books, there's they also have a sci-fi one out now. Um, I didn't buy it, but I saw it at Barnes & Noble. And these are only like $7.98. So uh, again, there's a sci-fi one out. Okay, so let's keep rolling here. Okay, Lost Ocean. Joanna Basford, who y'all know, uh, she's, you know, did the uh, uh, garden one that start, kind of started it all. I've done a couple pages in here. This one here, which is not finished, we did a stream on it, though. And this is the first time I think we used stickles to show how to use stickles. There we go. Stickles. Oh, did I miss some news about Paula? Please repeat it. Yeah, and the 12-inch binders are in Mike's clearance section, too. Yes. You don't have to get a fancy one. You just got to get one that's going to hold 12 by 12 page sleeves, right? Buy some sleeves, though, while you're there. You know, some of, them, some of the binders come with some, but, you know, it wouldn't hurt to buy an extra pack of sleeves. Yeah, the comic book one's cool. Yeah, it is, Vicky. And like I said, they have a sci-fi one, too. Yeah, I missed something on Paula, so please repeat it for me. I mean, I won't have to repeat it on recording, but I'd like to know what happened to Paula. I love these pages. So thanks, Terry. So again, you can see the stickles, and we talked about, I think I did use some orange stickles on this, but guys, you don't have to buy every color of stickles. Just get the diamond one. And then it's clear, so it'll give a glitter to, and it'll, you know, just the color, see-through. So you're going to see the color that's underneath. So you don't need a thousand colors. Oh, okay. Yay! Yay, 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 Paula. Ho-ho, Paula! Ho-ho! <laughs> yeah, use the coupon on the sleeves. Exactly, Terry. I haven't been over to Mike's in a couple weeks. I need Michael's. I need to get over there. I haven't been over there. I've just been swamped, so. Okay, so the only other page I think I've done in this one is this double page spread. Again, you'd want to put them in a note. If you took, tore them out, put them in a notebook so they're facing each other. But these have, they're double-sided, but like this, for instance. I probably would not color these shells, so I wouldn't mind tearing this page out and putting this in a sleeve because I'm probably not going to color those shells. It would not bother me to cut this out. It may bother you. So, you know, that's totally up to you whether you cut up your pages or not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, everybody's going, ho, ho, Paula. Paula has an interview. Yes. Yay, Paula. And uh, so anyway, uh, that's in the Lost Ocean. And this may be one of those books you don't want to cut up or tear out. It, you know, everybody is going to have their favorite books that they're not going to want to tear anything out. This, that's fine. But don't forget when you color in something and you forget, oh, well, you know, I colored that so long ago. I don't even, you know, don't, don't lose the love of that page you spent so much time on, right? Okay, Mary Inglebright, again. I know she has a second one out. I think Mom bought it, but I did not buy the second one. I have one page colored in here, I think, one. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, here. And I did an ombre lettering effect. Okay, this is one I'll cut out. I mean, I'll tear out. It's the, for one, it's the intro page. There's nothing on the other side. And these are perforated. So Miss Mary Inglebright wants you to tear it out. She wants you to tear these pages out. I don't know if they're... Yeah, they're single-sided, so you don't have to worry about the back. So she perforated it for you. <laughs> So let's get a sleeve here, and I'm running out of sleeves, just saying, because of the project we already did. I got a couple left here, and I need some more black paper. I got 
The black paper, again, is just that uh, Recollections brand or Hobby Lobby uh, Paper Studio brand. You can get a pack of this, you know, kind of um, uh, thin, it's like 60 weight maybe cardstock. Perfect for putting that in there. And technically, I need to put some tape on that. And I let me go ahead and just trim because I don't want the perforation on there. I don't want the perforation showing, but it makes it for easy tear out on some of those books. Okay, so let me take it out, get my double sided tape, put a little just in each corner. to hold it on the black paper, and especially if you trim it down to any extent, then you can have the black showing around all the edges, right? Let's see. Not standing up, so it's probably not going to be straight, but... Okay. And then I'll have a Mary Inglebright tab. Or I just might have a general tab. If I'm not going to do a whole bunch of Mary Inglebrights, you know, um, so let's make, make sure I get a tab for that. Back, back. So this way you will enjoy and you can show people your color book pages if you so desire. So there's the Mary Engelbrand. That's the only one I've colored in here. Mom's colored a few out of that one. Okay, the time chamber. Again, I think I've colored two. And this may not be one you want to cut up. All right, here's one I'm still working on. Okay, so again, you know, so many color books, so little time. I use this, um, the gel Stardust glitter pen. That, oh, let's see. There, it's very subtle glitter. It's not as shiny. It's not like stickles, but it's like Stardust. So I use that pen on any place that had a star. Okay, and again, I've got to finish the Pagoda. So... If you have any questions, put them in caps. And then the other, the other one I did is this one. Again, you know, I probably aren't, I would not, probably not going to color these owls. So I wouldn't mind tearing this out and making a double page of suits on the back of this one. Okay, again, if I was ever going to use this page, it would be to cut these doors out and put it in a journal. That may be something I might do. I might make a copy of this to put in my journal to make a door that opened. Okay, so then I could use these pages and still tear these out and put them in a, in a 12 by 12 binder. But anyway, so I'll just kind of let y'all see this one. Thanks, Terry. This one took a while. This one took a while. And this is the kind of thing where if you paint all this black and you don't want to try to get in that with a paintbrush, that's when I go in with a, a Faber-Castell black pit brush bin. I've not had any trouble so far. Now, don't email me. Always test. Always test every supply with every color book because every color book paper is different. But I've not had the uh, Faber-Castell pit brush pens go through any color book page. So, um, so that's how you can get in those little tiny spaces without getting in there with a the paintbrush. Just use, get, get in there with the, the pit pen, the pit marker, you know. So yeah, so there's that. I really like the colors in this one. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, guys. I think that's... Oh, no, I did this one. We did this one on a stream. Okay, so this one, again, we painted the background with paint and, and uh, painted in our own clouds and used stickles. So you can see the stars oh, and her hair. There we go. All the stars have stickles. Again, guys, just get the diamond stickles because you can go over it with clear stickles. You know, to me, this is what I'd get. I'd get a silver, a gold, and a clear. That's, you know, if I only had to get three stickles, I'd get a silver, a gold, and a clear. At Christmas, you might want to get a red and green because you use a lot of red and green at Christmas, you know, but whatever. You know, I've got a lot of it from the scrapbook days. A lot of them are, are I've used up. Um, but if you only had to get three colors, I'd get gold, silver, and diamond. It's called diamond, which is like clear. Okay, so we did that one, and again, let's see what's on the back. Okay, yeah, I'd want to probably color her. 
Again, though, if you want to keep the story, because this is like a storybook, guys. It has a story to it. If you want to keep the stories together, then just keep it all together. Don't, don't tear anything out of this book, right? So it just depends on, you know, but are you ever going to finish that book? Mm -hmm, just saying. Okay, these two are the ones that I talked about. This is Secret Paris. I call it my Paula Paris. She's the one that told me about this book. I love this book. I've colored bits out of it. I've made a couple copies of the, a couple of the girls for my art journal because I wanted to cut them out, and I don't want to cut this out. Annie, my daughter, got me Secret Tokyo for Christmas last year. I'm not going to cut this one up either. So, again, these have a lot of tiny things in them uh, related to that city. There's a New York. Um, there's a whole bunch of different ones now. But I, Paris was the first one I saw. So you can see they have different things. They have a lot of patterns. Um, but I just like these being together. I'm not saying I'll never cut them up. But right now, you know, I'm not. So let me show you how I color in this one. So this is one of those books where if I just want to color a little something, something, I'll color a little something, something. I never feel a need to finish this book or these pages. If I just want to color a couple perfume bottles and move on. Uh, and so I've done that a lot in this book. Some, this one's sewing stuff. Um, teapots. Coffee pots. So it, it just doesn't stress me out not to finish a page. I know that a lot of people cannot not finish a page before they move on. It does not bother me in the least. That pear's not done. The tomato is. The pear's not. <laughs> you know, the kiwi's not. You know, the apple's done. The cherries are done. The grapes are not. You know, it just doesn't bother me. I'll just go for it. And, and it, you know, I'm doing something. That's, this is one of the ones that I um, made a copy of and put in my uh, big journal. In my freestyle really big notebook. She's in the very back. This is a huge book here. So I put her somewhere back here. There she is. So I, I made a whoop, I made a copy of her to cut out, and she's cut out and put in the back of this book because I loved it. It reminded me of me. And then there's another page in here that reminded me that I put it in the front of the book. <laughs> and that's that one. So yeah. Those are the only two that I've made copies out of this book though and, and kept. Okay. Bye, Paula. Good luck. Keep us posted. Ho ho. <laughs> There's a ho ho for our Paula. Some hats. Some vegetables. It's just awesome. I just love it. I love my Paris book. I call it my Paris Paula book. Oh, yeah. Here's the other one that I showed you a minute ago. Okay, so the Paris and the Tokyo ones. These will probably not get cut up. Never say never, but Game of Thrones. There I have the Sherlock one, the Game of Thrones, the Outlander. These are the kind of books that it's, it's really, if you cut them up, you're pulling out a page out of the story. Because this is going, you know, it's telling the story um, in the Game of Thrones. There's an Outlander. There's a Sherlock. Doctor Who. Um, I'm think trying to think of some. There's quite a few of these that are the official coloring book to the. And they're again ten, I think. Yeah, ten by ten. And so you, if you did cut these up, you know, if you're a real Game of Thrones person and you just love to color, and that's the only thing you're gonna do in it you know, color this whole book, I would, I would make its own book. Like if I colored every page in this book, I'd take it apart and put it in its own book, its own sleeves, right? But I have a few pages working, going on in here. None of them I don't think are finished, but I'll show you a few. The, it's beautiful. And I think there's three or four different artists that worked in it. This is one that's almost done. And again, we put stickles, glitter on it to make it look icy and snowy. I need to do a little bit more on the wolf, but she's done. So there you go. You can see the stickles glitter. 
Okay, this one we've done a little bit on stream. And again, I don't watch the Game of Thrones because I want to read the books before I watch any of the shows. So I've not seen the books, I mean, read the books or seen the shows. Cameron, my grandson, loves the Game of Thrones. He's reading the books, he's seen all the shows. Anyway, um, so this, uh, so that, uh, what I was trying to say is, is I don't know what color uh, the banners and their hair and each character is supposed to be. He's, he might supposed to be a redhead. Those flowers might supposed to be pink. I don't know. So, you know, because I'm coloring it any way I want, because I'm the boss of my color book, I don't care what, tr um, what throne they're from, right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. So we've done a little bit of this. I've shown, you know, how we started on this one. What else do I have in here? She's just wa has the wash on her. Um, we haven't done any of the fire, and I'll probably put stickles to make her glitter. You make the fire glittery. Again, that's just the acrylic wash. The only thing we started shading was her leather belt right there. So again, you see, you forget. I don't know if y'all, you know, I'm, I've done flips of all these books, but this is a really an awesome book. If you like the Game of Thrones, you will love this book. Love it. I mean, it's got all the castles, uh, all the character. It's got everything. It's got everything. And if you watch the show, you would probably want to color it uh, correctly, right? You'd want to color it like the right, um, you know, flags and banners and everything else and have all their hair the right color because it starts out here in the beginning. See, it's got all the houses. I don't know if they call them, if they call the house up or it's the throne up or whatever. Okay, so there's a bits of that one. Okay, the Wandering City. I when I saw this book, I said, "Oh my gosh, I got to have that book." I bought this one when it first came out, like the day it came out. It's put out by Mola Skina. <laughs> the people that make the mole skins, you know, they call people just call them mole skins. I call them moles, but I think it's really actually pronounced. I did look it up. I actually did. Mola Skina. You don't have the Game of Thrones book? Well, Suzanne, well, you better put it in your cart. <laughs> put it in your Amazon wish list. You know, that's a thing, guys. You, you know, you can put all your books in your Amazon wish or whatever cart, Amazon, I mean, the uh, wish list site you buy your stuff from. And then you'll have at least, even if you don't buy it, you'll have it in your memory. You'll have it someplace where you don't forget to look at that book at some point. This is called The Wandering City by Carlos Stanga, Stanga, Stanga. And I've only done one page in it, and it was The Watch, okay? The Watch Innards with the 24 jewels, although I think mine has more than 24 jewels. <laughs> but I used metallic bronze, silver, and gold metallic um, pens. So you can see it shine. And then I did use red stickles to do the jewels. So let's see if you can see the jewels. There we go. See the jewels? It's the only page I've done in here. And I feel shame on me. I really do. I wanted this book so much. So then I get it and I've only done one page. But it's just awesome. It's an awesome, awesome book, guys. And it's just so me. It's so me in all the different imaginary cities, towns. Look at that fence. Ironwork fence. Castles, buildings, um, you know, different people. It's like a whole little world. It's its own little world. There's jungle, mazes, topiaries. So the whole book is just with fountains. I can't see a fountain without thinking of Sean Connery. Happy birthday, Sean. So, let's see. I think his birthday's tomorrow, I think. Maybe it's today or tomorrow. So, happy birthday, Sean Connery. So, oh, and it even comes with a little official Mola Skeena, you know, that comes in every book. So, yeah, it's called The Wandering City Coloring Book. Thanks, Grammy. Okay. Imagimorphia. Again, yeah, I just showed, um, I showed, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, Anamorphia on the last segment. I showed the, I've done a lot of pages in um, um, Anamorphia. 
and this is Imagimorphia. Now, this is his second one. I think he's working on third. Uh, he's also got the little sketchbook that someone gifted me. I have not colored anything in that one. But this is the only page I've done. And I'm leaving it like this. I'm leaving one colored and one not. With just the uh, stickles. I stickled all. Well, first off, I went over all the spider web with silver. Silver pen. Then on top of the silver pen, I put silver stickles. So that's actually silver stickles on every single web. And then I did the spiders in red. So if you're arachnophobic, just look away. Okay, so, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. And here's it with nothing colored. There's all the little creatures and everything stuck in the, in the web. And then here it is with all the creatures colored real brightly. I did that on purpose. So, yeah. So you can see all the stickles glittering on the spider web. That was fun. And that's, that's the only page I've done in here. I hate to say it. Oh, and yes, this did go through because what happened is I did not let the, um, the, the paint that I put on first dry before I put the stickles. So I saturated the spider with red and it did seem through, which doesn't bother me. I'll paint it over white color pencil over it and it doesn't matter but it's a it's a, a a point that you always want to let whatever you're doing dry before you put those layers on guys because that will, that will happen if it's not dry yes it's stickleized but anyway i love this book and i want to do more in it again it's just a matter of so many color books so little time i need to do the hump day camel <laughs> So, yeah. So, yeah, that's Imagimorphia. And the other one is Anamorphia. All right. Then, uh, Miss Vicki B had sent us this, um, these two grayscale pages. I'm going to put these in this notebook here, okay, along with the ones that Trina sent, so that I remember that I have them to do them. So, I'm going to put them in sleeves. Put them in the to-do section of the notebook, which if you miss that, just go back to the part before this one. I'll name these part one and part two, uh, just so that you can uh, um, keep, you know, keep them to keep the parts together there. So I'm going to put this and the ones Trina, which did I set those out? Here's the ones that Trina sent us. <clears throat> grayscale and this she did this one with alcohol inks so we have some more uh, grayscale to do so I'm going to put those with the ones that Miss Vicki B sent in my in some sleeves in the blank section of the notebook to be colored section okay next we have this is the naturescape one that you see me use a lot in my art journal so the page that, the, so you see, this is what the giraffes look like. I mean, of course, they weren't colored, but that's how they were laid out. And then in my art journal, I cut them all out separately and put them on a double page spread, two on this side and one on this side. And then I mixed media, collage, painted. But this one is an awesome book. This is also where I got the little fit, goldfish, not goldfish, um, clownfish out of. And so this is an awesome one to color bits and cut out for an art journal. Okay, and I've done that. Here's some koi. Here's where we've cut out some. Um, you see we've already cut some out. This is actually the day we got the idea to do the color page swap. The color book page swap some months ago. This was the idea where we got that from. And the swap, we, the swap ended yesterday. I've swapped them all out. If you're here or you're watching the recording, um, the swap was, I swapped everything out yesterday and they all went out today. So, so anyway, I wanted to remind you that these kind of books from uh, Creative Haven, the steampunk one, uh, I mean, so many of my color book pages that you see me cut up are these Creative Haven. Um, they're really not expensive at all. I think they're between five and seven ninety nine, and and Hobby Lobby will take coupons. Michael's will not. Hobby Lobby has quite a few Creative Havens. You can get them, and they will take coupons. Okay. 
Um, let's see here. I'm going to get this one and... Okay, so the uh, last two I have here to show are the Coloring Studio by Somerset Studio, which, by the way, our Angie Bell is supposed to be in the next issue, the third one. So I have the first, the two, the only two that they've come out with, and I've colored some in both, although um, this one I think I've cut something out and given away, um, but I think I have something in here. Yeah, this one here. So, this will be something, these pages out of the Coloring Studio, Somerset Studio, these are, will be cut out and put in my idea notebook as well. The other thing, though, about these, not only does the Coloring Studio, and you'll see this in a lot of uh, craft and art magazines, Zentangle magazines, different color, anything that has coloring book stuff in it, no, I haven't colored the meerkats yet, <laughs> Lindsay. Um, the next time you stream, will you do a little tutorial on eyes? Not necessarily realistic, but I have trouble placing pupils on your people. Um, okay, if you look at any of my look at any of my portrait drawing or animal drawing video, Sarah, I draw eyes on all those. Can I tell you, this is how you draw an eye, period? No, because every eye on every human and animal is different. Every eye is different. Every pupil is different. So for me to tell you this is how you draw an eye, it just doesn't work because it isn't how you draw. It's like saying, how do you draw um, an, an ear, a mouth? They're, everyone is different. But if you want to see how I've done them on specific people or animals, they're video. Just look under portraits, animal portraits, people portraits, animal portraits, and you'll see. Because I really zoom in on those, Sarah, real close up, as close as I could get, so you can see how I've colored them. Okay? <clears throat> so, yeah. I've got plenty. I've got lots of those. Got lots of videos. Or anytime you see, uh, or if you see me color the uh, Jasmine Beckett Griffith girls, for uh, Whimsy Girl Eyes, you know, you can see how I did it that. Yeah, is the third one out yet? Okay, so An then Angie's going to be in the fourth one? I'm not sure, but Angie Bell's supposed to be in the next one. I don't mean I don't know if that means the one that's out now or the fourth one going to come out. I don't know if she's still here. Okay, so I hope that helps, Sarah. Um... The other thing about the Coloring Studio, Somerset Studio, and a lot of the magazine type of coloring books and journals and ideas is that they have a lot of tips. We ask the artist, uh, how did they do this particular technique? Well, if you want to keep those in your color book idea inspiration notebook, <laughs> then cut out articles. If you want to remember techniques that they used on specific pages, you know, uh, here's a Zentangle thing, here's a little note on that, you know, then cut those out too and keep them in your notebook. So this will be something that I'll cut out. You know, I did the dripping here, and uh, I'll cut this out, and I'll make a tab in my idea notebook for Somerset, because I do do a, a, a good bit out of these, and uh, it just so happens that I... I end up cutting them up or tearing them out. The third one is at, the third one is out or is coming out. Is that that the one that Angie's in? Okay, because I haven't seen the third one yet in the stores or anything. This is the second one, and in the second one they did mention me um, in their spotted on. That's not it. They're spotted on our fave Pinterest pins. So this one. I used a face on, this is a poster right here. This is a full-on big poster. I'll see if I can pull it out real quick. And I used one of the color, one of the pages out of the book, colored it, cut it out, and put it on a poster, and did stenciling and other things. But that one here, and then here's the one that, um, that you, uh, I just showed you. So they, they found, they found them on Pinterest. 
which you know I post to Pinterest occasionally, but it's like it's like after maybe every few months because I do Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Ustream, YouTube. You know, uh, I love Pinterest, but you can get lost over there in Pinterest. So we did this one. We did this one on Ustream. I mean, on uh, streamed it and put it on YouTube. Here was their completed project, and we kind of took some, you know, took some ideas from it, took kind of a color theme, but we made it our own. We added some collage bits, stenciling, dripping. So there's our version of the color book page. Again, I'll probably cut, you know, tear this out. Uh, I'll, I won't do it right this minute because you just saw me do a whole bunch of these, but I'm going to set them aside and I'll tear these out <clears throat> and put them in my uh, book. Put them in my idea color book collection notebook, Dealy Bob. <laughs> so, anyway, lots of good stuff in here that you can either cut out and use in your art journals or if you just want to save the page. You know, like this would be an awesome right here, guys, just to. Put this, cut this out and color it. Put it, uh, uh, you know, you could save the information if you want, or just put this in the beginning of your three ring binder. Put it in the in the beginning of your three ring binder, where you know this book belongs to, something like that. So that's some ideas for the color book studios. Hey, Eileen, good to see you. How you feeling? Tim is in the third one, and so is Dina, Dina Wake, Wakely. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look for that. I haven't uh, I haven't even been to the bookstore. I, well, I, last time I was at the bookstore, I would have noticed if it was there, and it wasn't. So, um, yeah, it probably just came out. So, let me, I have my page protector note here next to my page protector. Color Studio 3. I'll write that down to look for it. All right, guys. So, do we have any questions or anything? This is kind of a short one. Um, trying to think if there's anything else that we didn't talk about do, uh, making a notebook. Hope y'all got some ideas from it. Don't have to do it just like mine. You know, make your own. Use what you want. But, you know, like to give y'all some ideas on, on idea collecting, keeping notebooks and all that. I love that because... I'm of the, I'm old school. If you don't write it down, it's not, it's not real. <laughs> it ain't happening. Ideas floating around in your head. If you don't do something, and trust me, you get more ideas than you, than you will ever use. So you need to write them down and so that you'll use them or combine them in new ways. If you have one idea in your head and you just mull that one idea over and over and over, you make something may come over it. You may have 10 ideas, but if you write those 10 ideas down and they're all on your mind like at the same time, look at them all and see how they interact with each other or how they can be interwoven. Have you colored a grayscale book? No, because um, I don't have, I, I just now got one, uh, who was, which one was it? Somebody sent me a grayscale book. I think it's one of the artist ones where it's like, uh, photographs of um, it's like photographs of uh, what do you call it paintings that have been turned to grace and that's what these are here guys you know they're photographs and paintings by people that have been turned into uh, grace you can do this yourself all you have to do is take a picture a painting or whatever you run it through your um, your uh, printer settings and there's a, you can turn it into a black and white. So this is a vintage, I don't even know who did this painting, right? It's a, a famous painting. And you can turn them into black and white, essentially. And then you print them out. Now, that being said, how much your ink in your printer is going to smear if you add wet medium to it, it's going to depend on your printer ink, okay? It's going to depend on your printer ink. Uh, in this case, Trina said she added alcohol inks to this, and it smeared very little. If you're just going to use color pencil, then, you know, uh, you don't have to worry about anything smearing. But, you know, these are kind of almost, you know, beg for some uh, washes on them, right? So we'll try to get to one of these maybe next week. 
We'll see. We'll see, guys. I have some things coming up. We'll see. Um, so I'm trying to think if I have any other books handy that I've colored in. I, you know, you've seen all the art journal pages that I've used uh, color book bits in, and I'm sure I've got more color books. Um, hang on, guys. I got to answer this. Just a minute. Okay. All right. All right. Hang on, guys. Okay. No more messages. No more messages. Okay. So, um, I lost my train of thought. Sorry, guys. Oh, well, I lost my train of thought. So anyway, um, that will be, uh, those are the books that I have at least a page or two colored in. There's probably some more on the shelf, but I'm not going to leave the stream and go spend 10 minutes digging through right now. Yeah, Bennett Klein. Yeah, Bennett Klein is a grayscale. It's not, it's not as grayscale as, say, like, um, like this, you know. These are like, again, I think of the true grayscale as like a photograph turned to black and white. Whereas Bennett Klein, let me grab it, they, he has a lot of gray in it. He has a lot of gray in his pages. And, you know, he may have run them through some kind of a filter to make them more shady looking. And I don't mean that in a bad way, I just mean shaded. I'm not throwing shade on Bennett Klein. But can you see the difference there? There's, there's a lot of shading and, and a bit of grayscale, but it's not to this point. It's not to this point of grayscale. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, the bicycle book, I'm working in some pages right now. I'll show that one when I get a, a few more things done in it. Uh, I did do the, I did a little flip through. Uh, I, I'm not going to show you all the pages I'm working on because they're all partially done. But I will show you the where I've done the um, the cats. Okay, so every page has a cat, and I did a I made it into a flip book. Let's see if I can work it here. I don't know if that I can work it. Let's see if it'll because it's stiff, right? So let's see if I can do the flip. All right, so it starts out white. See, it's not wanting to flip for me. I could almost do it backwards better than forwards. <laughs> Hang on, guys. So I started out, he's white. Just look at the cat there. He's white, and he goes to gray. And I'm missing lots of pages, guys. But he goes to gray, dark burnt, dark gray, then he goes to black. And then I'm going the other way. From the back side, he goes from black. And I colored him then lighter, lighter, gray, lighter gray, lighter gray. And then he ends up at the back as a white cat. <laughs> so I've done that in there. Um, so I'm working on, here's one page that I'm working on. That's all I'm going to show you right now. This will be a book I'm not going to cut up. Okay, I love the art in it. I love everything about this book. This one will not get cut up. Um, so anyway, guys, I think that's, oh, 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 real quick. I could not find my Tim Holtz Christmas tags from five, four years ago. Gosh, how long has it been? It's been at least, at least four years, at least three to four. Anyway, it was before I started uploading to YouTube. So it's at least three Christmases ago. But anyway, um, I did find the photographs. So I can't show you the actual tag. The tags are all this size. They're on a piece of paper like this. This is one of the ones that I started over on, but I still had it so I can at least show you how they look um, size-wise and, and realistic. So I took photographs of all my completed tags. So if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, Tim, a few years ago, and I think he might still do it. Um, he does 12 tags of Christmas, and what he does is he takes a real tag and he puts his 
you know, dimensional little metal things and little, you know, all his little doodads, <laughs> whatever you want to call them, product. And he does uh, decorative tags, and they're all different themes. Well, when he had this challenge some years ago, I had none, none of the... Um, did What did you use with it, Heather? Heather said she colored a photocopy page with printer ink. But but uh, how, what printer do you have and what did you use? Um, so anyway, so this is the size of the tags. And I tried to have the same size tag as he did. I, but I drew everything with color pencil because I had none of the supplies. So I can't find my actual tags. They are here somewhere. I found the photographs of my tags, but I cannot find the, the actual... Um, the tags. So you have to look at these photographs. Remember that it's all color pencil. There's no dimensional anything on it. There's no, it's all 100% flat. Okay. So this is, these are the 12 tags of Christmas that I um, photographed that I did. And again, they're really this size. Okay. So again, that's all, it's all color pencil. He had these little glass Santas, these little glass Santas, so I tried to, you know, do them. The letters, he had some stickled, like, chipboard. Yeah, he did, I'll show you the one that he posted on the phone. Okay, so here's this one that wasn't working out, but I ended up finishing it. But here you can see, here's the finished one. It's all done, it's all drawn. No, no dimensional anything. He had a little red puffy paper heart and a glitter angel. Well, I tried to emulate that. Of course, the photograph is not going to let me twinkle it for you. You know, but I, I tried to, you know, I did a little white stippling to make it. Um, but all this is color pencil, guys. And uh, probably a white gel pen. Well, I got two copies of that one. So here's a, yeah, and I did do these uh, live. I did these on a stream, but I did not, it was before I was uploading to YouTube, so they're not there anymore. This one was a 10. It was a it was like a painted 10 thing that Timmy did. Tim Holtz, I shouldn't say Timmy. Here's the one he posted on his blog. Uh, again, there's no dimension to any of this. It's all all drawn. It's all all color pencil, probably a little bit of paint and gel pen, but it's all drawn. There's no no dimensional items to it. So I'm just going to flip through all 12 of them. I hand drew all the little faux music. Um, he had some real music paper or something. Hey, silver things, by the way. Again, there's no glitter on this, no stickles on that. It's all dotted. It's all color pencil. Same thing for the silver bell. It's all just just pencil. All drew all this. Cuz I had none of his supplies. So I drew it all. One of these days I'll come across, I'll come across what happened to my tags, or I should say my tag drawings. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, there's some little diamond, um, he had some little uh, jewels, some little crystal jewels hanging off there. So we drew the little crystal jewels, a little pearl droplet, drew the little pearl. And here's, uh, this is the last one. Again, he had a little he had a little metal tag and a little metal snowflake or something. So yeah, it's all drawn. Thanks, Terry. Yeah, they look more real when you see them in person, not just a photograph, but I can't find them. I have 12 of them, just like this. <sighs> Here's my template, because this was the size of all of them. I drew them all this size. I just put them on a piece of card like this, put a tag on there and trace the tag. 
and then everything else we just drew in because I want them all the exact same size as his tag, right? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I used to do murals. I used to do trompe l'oeil mur murals when I did mural painting. But that was, that was in the 80s, not early 90s. I probably did put them in a binder. That's what I thought. That's why I found these, Jean. I found them in a little binder. But just the pictures, not the tags. And I looked, I looked good. I thought I did. I cannot find it. I usually know where everything is. The only other idea where I might have put them is in one of my big portfolios under this table. Under this table are my portfolios of art, not, not art journaling and not journal that is, I mean, art that's in sketchbooks, but individual pieces of art. They're in portfolios under this table. And I'm thinking I may have thrown those 12 tags in a portfolio. That's the only other option I think they could be in is a portfolio. Okay, guys, so I'm going to head out. Yeah, he did t Timmy, uh, Tim Holt. I got to say Timmy. I don't, I don't know that he likes that. We call him Timmy in, in affection, but he may not think it's nice to call him Timmy. But anyway, he, uh, he did post it on the blog, on his blog that year, because he was posting his favorite one every day. And I didn't think he'd post mine because it wasn't, I didn't use any of his supplies. Not a one. It was all pencil, right? So anyway. All right, guys. So is there any more questions or anything well, before we go? Don't forget tomorrow's Terry's birthday, Tammy's birthday. Let me get the birthdays real quick. Uh, don't forget all the all the uh, ATCs swap that were gone out today. And um, if you're international, what I said, we think we had two from Australia, six Canadian, three or four uh, UK, and 33. I think U.S. So hopefully you guys in the U.S. will have your te your color book ATC swap by Monday. International hopefully won't be much longer after that. Uh, so birthdays. Let me get my birthday list here. So if y'all want to say happy birthday to anybody, um, and all the birthday cards have gone out for August and the first week of September. Terry and Tammy are uh, tomorrow. Canadian Robin is Saturday, and Jeannie is on next Tuesday, and that covers the rest of August um, for the rest of this month. So, yeah. And uh, so I guess I'll let you guys go, and uh, thanks for being here, and hope y'all enjoyed doing some color book idea exploration. <laughs> and we'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.